is up everybody welcome to Georgia reviews before I get started I want to do a little bit of a rant and I always say in these videos that I did not like the fact that McFarlane got the license for the DC toys at like the $20 price point what I call a Marvel Legend price point point. and the fact that he jumped them to seven inches and a few people have ranted on that that he made them seven inches but I still collect I still love DC and a lot of these figures are great so let me go ahead and just say what I don't like is he never completes a team like he'll start like years ago he started the justice league unlimited and i haven't seen the justice league unlimited figure and i don't know how long and i'm an 80s early 90s dc fan i'm trying to create the justice league this is sort of what my today's versus battle was about so um and it's kind of hard because he makes these toys where you got to buy like three superman or Superman to make the perfect Superman. No matter what era, he'll, he'll get the boots wrong. He'll get the trunks wrong. It's just always something. And then, first I thought he was just incompetent, but I realized he's some type of evil genius <laughs> making you buy these toys. So I, I kind of don't like that. And he always makes the most darkest, gory. I mean, he's been made so many vampire, damn Batman, Robin, and people like that. And uh, just, just like, oh, I just knew he would do that when he got the license. Because he, he's known for Spawn. That's his thing. And that's a dark uh, comic book. Now, I mean, I love it, but I don't need that in my DC. But anyway, today we have a versus battle to see which Aquaman can remain in my collection and which one will be sold off. We have a newer style packaging for the McFarlane Digital Aquaman. We have like the Aquaman name logo right there. Say ages 14 and up. On the back of his packaging, it has some very cool artwork. Aquaman holding a trident sitting underwater on a coral shell throne. Looks very cool. And on my right, we have the standard DC Multiverse packaging with the comic book art in blue in the background. DC Multiverse Aquaman. On the back of his packaging, it has an image of the toy. Um... He sort of looked like he's underwater. They added some little art with the shark going around him. with it's not included in the package. But, um, so I'm going to get these guys open and see who remains in the collection. This versus battle is an example of what I don't like about McFarlane toys because we have basically 90% of the same body. They changed the head. He adds some more accessories to the second version of the figure, and I'm still trying to go for the classic look and build my perfect Aquaman. I'm going to start with the digital Aquaman. I think I... I think I'm leaning towards his colors more so than the other one. It's like a lot more vibrant. But on this channel, we always start with the head. Just take a look at that head scope. Now, while there's nothing wrong with it, I don't think I prefer it. His eyes look beady to me. And I guess you got to hold it in the proper light to see the blue of his eyes. But he kind of looks like he's under somebody's control or he's just been sick or something. You know what I mean? They've been poisoned in the sea. And then the hair. The hair, while very well sculpted, I'm not sure if my camera picking it up and the lights may be hindering it, but you can kind of see the bleed through to his scalp or um, the plastic underneath. And I'm not sure. First, I thought it was meant to be a wash and some highlights into his hair, but I don't think so. Very well molded. I believe it's a separate piece than the rest of the head that's just put on top. But yeah. As far as his scale armor, that looks good. All the way around, it is an orange plastic with like some orange, orange just metallic flecking in it. That's not just the light. There's a little bit of a paint app to it, which is cool. Then the belt area, the belt has some bleed to it. You can kind of see the green coming through. And, you know, they're not going to prime it before they paint it. And they didn't put on a heavy enough coat. And then the trunks that people call the diaper. This is kind of hard on my. Okay, it's a little bit softer back here. So, okay. Might work out doing an articulation section. And then the legs are just all green plastic. The fins on the back. So, But he looks like everything I need from Aquaman to go in my collection. Let's check out this guy. And he has the head. This is more synonymous with the hook hand, which they have now used. in the Plastic Man Builder figure wave. He has a, a soft scowl to his face. Very stern look. You don't know if he's thinking, getting ready for battle or whatever. This is cool. This is Aquaman. The face is painted on. It's just not straight up plastic, which is a nice touch. I mean, he looks awesome. Even though he, I wasn't looking for a bearded 
and long hair Aquaman, but I cannot deny that this head looks amazing. It looks better than both of the heads from the other figure. His hair is a soft, pliable plastic. It shouldn't get in the way of any articulation. Has some nice highlights painted into it. Nice molded in individual strands all over the head. I mean, it looks fantastic, but I'm not sure if he fits my Justice League with this look. His scale armor doesn't have like the, the wash over it. It's just like pearlescent, darker orange. He does have a paint app on the collar that the other version doesn't have. And coming down to his gold belt, it looks so much better. Like there's no bleed coming from the gold. I don't know if the gold is just a heavier paint, but that looks a lot better. Again, same leg, same everything. And I do like the head, but for my main Justice League Aquaman, um, I don't know if this is the head I want on it. But as far as head scopes, I think this one wins. Even though the other one comes with two head scopes. Let's get to that. All right, taking a look at this head. Um, this head scope is actually no better. The eyes are even more beady, but they're open wider with the smile on his face, which is kind of weird. Like these larger open eyes should have been over here and it might have worked out. So let's get this off. Ah, orange pig. <laughs> Pop this on. And here we have our smiling Arthur Curry. They actually changed the entire head. They didn't just add a smile here. Like, if you can see, they changed the actual curvature of the forehead, which I don't like. And they actually changed the hair. This is a completely different hair scope. And it suffers from the exact same, like, bleed through. And I, I could be interpreting this wrong, and that, that's meant to be like a um, wash on his hair, but it just looks like bleed to me. But out of the two heads, I, I think the smiling head, while it looks weird up here in the forehead, I mean, I would have to go, this just looks like he's like a zombie or something, you know, like, I don't know what's going on with this version. Aquaman has 22 points of articulation according to the box, so let's take a look. Aquaman can look up this far, look down this far, which is significant, 360, side to side with the head. Because of the hair, we're going to have a little bit of a difference. He can look up this far. Still pretty good. Down. 360. Side to side. Shoulder joints. Rotation. Butterfly hinge in there. Double jointed elbow. Ball jointed wrist. Hinge up and down. Abdomen. Rock back this far. We get a little bit of a separation right there. Look down this far, waist rotation, full 360, front kick, back kick, splits, barely a bit of a thigh swivel right there, double jointed hinge knee, his foot, as far to the front, to the back. Next up, accessory is going to start with the tridents. This trident right here, I can tell you, this is a more cartoony, kitty looking trident. I guess it should be, no toys are mostly for kids anyway. Um, but the golden painted trident, I'm pretty sure this is painted, not casted in gold. This one looks better to me. It, it, you, it brings out more of the detail. There's some detail like at the handle. You can barely see it on the unpainted trident. Same thing down here. The way the light hits it, you can just see the detail in it. So the golden trident wins for the Endless Winter Aquaman. Both of these Aquaman come with gripping hands. They sort of look like mirror opposites of each hand. With that one finger open, but they hold the trident very firmly. And if I didn't continue the accessories and continuing to talking about the hands, we have a pair of swimming hands. And because the colors are different, you can't really put them over here and have a match. So let's get one on. Pop that off. Simple ball joint, ball peg system, and pot. Oh my goodness. The hand is the same color as his flesh tone, and they just painted it green. But they have all this green plastic. How. Why not just cast a hand in green plastic so we don't have to worry about it uh, rubbing off? But here we go. We get a swimming hand with this Arthur, which is so cool. Like, all action figures deserve interchangeable hands, no doubt. Next up, we have the standard collector's cards. And I can tell you right now, this collector card looks so much cooler. The artwork, it's cool seeing a toy and they added some images to it. That's cool seeing that, but this just looks better. I like the color. Flipping them over, we have different but similar bios. That very, of course, they're going to be similar to the same guy. Bring it closer in case you want to pause and read that. Check that out. And I did it earlier, but one more time in case you missed it. Bam. We also get the stands, the same redone stands. But they add a little something extra. We get the, we get the McFarlane logo and the McFarlane Toys digital right there, which, which kind of, I don't know, it, 
I like it. These are so bland. This probably is more practical, but this is so bland that, you know, you get tired of They could have made this like a clear translucent blue and pretended like it was water. Both of them. And then like be a little piece of water or something. Not, not even change the scope. Just make it kind of coordinate to the theme of the each figure in the DC Multiverse line, you know. Next up for the digital Aquaman, we get the digital car. McFarlane Toys Digital. Flipping it over, I guess you have to scratch this off to get your digital code. And there's some instructions right here to uh, check out the digital figure. I have absolutely no effing interest in a digital figure, whether it's build a figure or whatever. I mean, like, like for what? Like, I can see if it was like the program to 3D print your own McFarlane figure and put it together or something like that. Maybe... So, um, I don't know. I, I don't care for this. This is an uh, extra inclusion for accessory, but I won't count it because I don't care for it. Then we talked about the extra pack-in head, but it's not done so great that it's trumping the one head over here. And I'm looking for a clean-shaven head, but this head <laughs> trumps both of these. This cool. is just a solid, solid head right here. When one trumps two, you've done something wrong, or either you've done something really great. And lastly... Our digital Aquaman comes with Quisp, the little elf-like being from the fifth dimension. This is like the innocent, cutesy-looking version. Like, if you didn't know, you would think he was like some little helper in Atlantis or something. But, um, nice paint, well-painted eyes, funny-looking lips. His mouth is a little bit of gay because his teeth green hair. I believe that's a separate piece. I always love it when the hair is a separate piece. Yellow-painted outfit, same yellow paint as the belt in his hair. And he's barefoot. I guess like an elf should be. He has the huge Frodo feet. But if you don't know anything about this guy, um, fifth dimensional being, he has power sim similar to Mixoplick. Um, if he can think it, he can do it. And I think he started off as a good guy, but he became bad. And he gave him a, a makeover. The hair was white and he looked more demonic and all that. Starting trouble. Oh, he can actually articulate. His arms actually move. I thought he was a static figure. Huh. But yeah, this guy started some trouble in the Dimensional War and all of that. And um, got in trouble a few times. He's been around uh, for a long time, since at least the 70s. Now, and he actually has a port for the stand. Even though he doesn't come with his own stand. But bam, you can get this guy on the stand. Pretty cool. Um, I have no love for this guy, but it's, uh, extra accessory is always a nice inclusion. I know it comes as no surprise that the DC Classic Aquaman digital version wins the accessory battle, but will it be enough to keep this guy in my collection? Next up is the size up and the rundown. We're going to kick it off aquatic style. From the world of Transformers is God Neptune Generation 1 and Transformers Legend Class Sea Spray. Representing Marvel Legends is Prince Namor and from G.I. Joe Classified series is Torpedo. And just to show Namor is not afraid to rock the beard either. And overall showcasing McFarlane's refusal to make a 6 inch scale figure like the rest of the toys. Here's Endless Winter Aquaman with my current lineup of Justice League. And it's changing and turning over trying to build a perfect league. So it'll probably be different next week. And the classic Aquaman. Final thoughts and to declare a winner. Let's start with package presentation. Even though I'm throwing out both boxes, the classic Aquaman package was slightly better, giving it a different look than we've seen in the past from a lot of these figures from McFarlane DC Multiverse figures. So with that, I'll give that to the classics version. As far as the overall figure, they share the same body except for the head. So let's focus on the head. The Endless Winter Aquaman had the superior head, even though it's not the head that I'm looking for. So I'll give him the win for the head as far as the body overall, but I do like the brighter orange. And then accessories, no doubt the classic Aquaman wins with accessories with the inclusion of Quisp, which I have no love for, but he comes with an extra set of hands. But as far as their tridents, I prefer the gold. So there's a lot of things from each one that goes better with the other. And I guess I could put the bearded head onto the brighter orange and green body and move the trident over there. And in doing so, I fall into the marketing trap from McFarlane. I said earlier, I thought he was just like really terrible at putting these figures together. But he's brilliant at making you buy multiple figures to build your preferred figure, whether it's Superman Aquaman, Batman, people are taking the trunks off, people are taking the belts off, 
um, rearranging the hands. Some people complain some of the hands are too big on some of the guys. So they'll buy another figure to strip it for the hands and just McFarlane's just selling a lot of these figures. This is the third use of this body that I know of. Here is the DC Multiverse Cyborg Builder figure Aquaman's body. And it's the exact same body being reused. Look at that head. It's just so awful. Um, the Trident is different for a change. And you get the Builder figure piece. I grabbed this because it was $12.49 on clearance at Target. But they've reused this body at least three times is the point I'm trying to make. So it's not hard for them to include more accessories as they go along. And then we got a couple different heads. But they had just recently used this body right here. So I'm falling into the trap of buying multiple figures to create one from my genre or my era of toys that I want on my shelf. And he knows what he's doing. So as far as to pick a winner, if I had to just get one, um, I would go with the Classics Aquaman. That's discounting the fact that I got this guy in clearance. I got him for like eight bucks. Yeah, yeah. Um, they were clearing my one day, him and the movie Aquaman, and I grabbed them both for um less than twenty dollars. So, but I'm not I'm not adding a price in, I'm just trying to see who's gonna go on my shelf. But I think this guy's gonna go on my shelf. And I would hold on to the head, but I have the Aquaman with the hook arm as well. So and he has the same head. I'm gonna have to compare those guys too. But tell me what do you guys think? Are you searching for the perfect figures from McFarland's DC Multiverse to put a team together to put them on your shelf? Are you having the same problem where one guy has the perfect hands or legs or head and you're just mashing these guys up? Tell me what you think in the comments below. And that's all I got for you guys. I want to thank you for watching the episode of George Reviews. The reviews are every toy has a story.